It's power back time on the Gutsy Podcast, your 20-minute boost to reclaim and refocus your energy. Get ready to have bursts of clarity, a boost of confidence, and the practical steps you need to make gutsy moves forward. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Have you ever wanted to make the change? Start to make the change. Do it a couple of times and then it just kind of fizzles away. Yep, me too. And it's frustrating as hell, isn't it? Because you sit around thinking like, I want to make this change. I want to do better. I want to be better. Why in the world can I not seem to get it together or keep this thing going? Well, today's Power Back episode is going to give you a handful of things so that you can help your efforts to stick. To get past the point where you would typically stop or revert, you got to have some tools and techniques to be able to do that. And that's what I'm going to give you today. A few times a year, I do these things called Live with LAs, where I go live for about an hour. And it's like a call in radio show, and I answer as many questions as I can. And I know that these are deeply, deeply personal questions. And also, I know that these are questions that so many other people have as well. And by the way, if you want to get in on one of those sessions, or all of them for that matter, if you sign up for my newsletter, I send out the dates and times um, in there and also on my social. So in the show notes of this episode, I'll put a link where you can sign up to get on that list. In one of the most recent sessions, uh, Gabriella shared a question. She says, I do a program, but it doesn't seem to stick. How can I get the work to stick? And I was like, yes, Gabriella, I hear you. This is something that so many people struggle with. And I have been there as well. It's like you get this desire to make a change because you want to alter something in your world. You start to do it. You get excited early on. You might even get some gear or some materials or something that you need to be able to do it. You do it for a little while and it feels good. And then it seems to just kind of fade away. You go back to old ways, you stop doing it, it becomes uninteresting, and before you know it, you feel like you're at square one again. In this yo-yo approach to whatever change that you're looking to implement, health, career, finances, relationship, I mean, you name it, this works for all of these things. It's exhausting, right? Like you, you want to make the change, that's why you've been thinking about it. And so today I'm hoping to give you a couple of different tools to help you get past that point so that even when you start to lean backwards a little bit, you're able to catch yourself and move forward. First things first, I want you to understand how your brain is functioning. Because a lot of times we go to like, there's something wrong with me. I'm stupid. I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough to stick with it. It's all this like really negative self-talk. When in reality, what's happening in the background is the reason. It's not because you can't do it. It's because your brain has been hardwired not to. I like to look at the brain like a dirt road. And these neuropathways, these are basically where all your habits are formed. Good, bad, in between. This is where they live. And these habits are like a dirt road. And if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you've heard this. If not, this this is a good one. Stick with me here. I want you to picture a dirt road. Now, this dirt road has been here forever, so much that you can literally see the grooves in the dirt where the tires have gone down this track. And when you go to turn your car or your truck or your trailer or anything down this road, your car just kind of automatically clicks into place because it's so well-defined. And as you're going down this road, even though it might be a little bit bumpy, there's a sense of familiarity and you know where you're going because these grooves are there to guide you. This is your current habit. This is your current lifestyle, okay? Now, if you turned down that road and you started to go a little bit and then you tried to steer your car to the right, you're going to be met with resistance, It's going to be bumpy, your wheel's going to want to turn back into place, and you're really going to have to like put a lot of effort into moving this thing to the right. And if you get over the hump, okay, now we've got to do it with the back wheels and eventually you get over and off the path. This is your new habit, the new thing that you're trying to implement, the thing that you want to stick. Now you can see why this becomes a little bit of a challenge because the old groove is pulling you back. It's old faithful. You know how to do this. You know how to handle it. It is familiar. The new thing takes a new amount of effort. 
It requires you to think about it more, put more action into it, put a little bit more oomph into it. Now, the cool thing that happens here is you can create a new habit, a new healthier habit, the one that you want to stick. And that happens with repetition. So imagine you turn down this road, you want to turn your wheel to the right, and you've done this over and over and over again, more than 66 times. I'm going to come back to that number. And what has now happened is you have created a new groove. You now have a choice that doesn't require as much effort. In fact, it becomes more familiar. And the more you do this, the more the old road fills in. Does it ever fully go away? No, but it can fill in and become less prominent. And the new road becomes the new road. This is where things have stuck. You've created a new habit. You've got a new lifestyle. And eventually you don't have to think about it nearly as much, sometimes at all. I think it's so important to understand that analogy and to hear that analogy because when you can picture it that way, it's like, oh, it's not that there's something wrong with me. It's just that my brain is not used to this and I have to help and guide it. You become an advocate for yourself instead of beating yourself up. And all that does is further reinforce these positive changes that you're trying to make. So what are some ways that you can help yourself in this process? Things that can help it stick. These might be brand new to you. Maybe you've heard them before, but I encourage you just to be open-minded and you can do all of them or just choose one. Choose something to help you steer the wheel to the right. There's five of these, so grab a pen and paper if you are in a safe place to do so. The first one, choose something that's interesting to you. How many times have you tried to force yourself to do something that's just not in alignment with you? Something that you just genuinely don't enjoy. As an example, I don't like running. I tried to make myself run. I claimed myself to do these 5Ks a few years ago. I did it for a little while and I never freaking enjoyed them. It was hard, but not in a way that like it was hard and I was working on and towards something. It just, it was just always unenjoyable. And guess what never stuck? Running. Turns out I'm a more low impact kind of gal. And I find walking or riding my Peloton to be substantially more enjoyable. It doesn't hurt me as bad, like physically, and it allows me to be more clear in my mind and the music and the atmosphere all of those things I just find really enjoyable. So yes, while it's still hard work, I mean, working out is working out. I mean, that's, that's work. I've chosen to do things that I enjoy, which makes it so much easier to stick with it. So I ask you today, what are some things or something that you've been forcing yourself to do that's just not your jam? Making yourself get up at the ass crack of dawn in the morning forcing yourself to eat a certain kind of food or a certain type of way. Maybe you've been wanting to write more and it just flows better on paper with a pen instead of a laptop, but you've been trying to force yourself to do it on the laptop. I mean, these are often very simple things, but when you break it down to, do I even enjoy this? Now, I will say a little caveat. Oftentimes when we are creating something new, there's a there's a period where maybe it's not super enjoyable, but because it's new. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is like just a deep disgust or displeasing feeling around this thing that you're making yourself do. And what would you prefer to do instead? What would feel more interesting? What would feel more exciting? What just genuinely feels better to you? Friend, you are allowed to do it that way. You don't have to do this thing like anyone else other than you. And when you enjoy something, you are more willing and likely to stick with it. So evaluate that stuff. If you don't love it, do it your own way. Number two is you got to make time for it. You and I both know that if you do not carve out time, if you do not create intentional time for this change, for this thing, for this effort to have place for, you know, it's the first thing to go. You talk yourself out of it, you know, you'll get to it tomorrow, you don't have enough time for it today, that that doesn't help it stick. When you hold time for it, you can stay consistent. And when you are consistent with it, then 
we are talking about creating a new habit. Remember earlier I talked about the number 66? Well, turns out that is the average amount of days that it takes, the average amount of time or efforts or implementation that it takes to form a new habit. Now, if we broaden that range a little bit more, some experts say it can take anywhere between 18 and 254 times, but it looks like 66 is about the average. So if you're wanting to implement yoga into your regular routine, it takes you doing yoga 66 times before your brain recognizes that, hey, this is something that we want to do and it's going to be easier here on out. Think of that 66 as that many times of turning the wheel to make the new groove. And when you're not holding space during that particular season, it's gonna be the first thing that you let go because it's not yet familiar. It's not yet ingrained in your body and in your mind. So you gotta make time for it. And what do you need to do that? Well, that's up to you. You can set calendar reminders, you can time block in your schedule. You can get a babysitter, a neighbor to help around the house. Say to your spouse, hey, between this time and this time, I am going to dedicate myself to doing this thing. I could really use your support. For some people, it's signing up for something, dedicating yourself to a class or a session or something where you have to be a certain place at a certain time. Again, choose what works for you. You don't have to do all the things. You just have to do the thing. And the thing in this case is blocking in time. So there is time in your life for this. The third one is our good old friend, the mind. My friend, we know, you know, I know. (laughs) It doesn't matter how much you want something. When your brain gets involved and starts doing that back and forth thing, chances are it's going to be the thing that wins. I'm tired and it's been a long day and it's gray outside. It was raining three days ago. My left toe hurts. I mean, you can come up with all kinds of great shit in the 11th hour points and kudos for your creativity. However, that shit isn't going to help it stick. So the third thing is create something that interrupts your thoughts. One of my personal favorites is Laura, same or better. Do you want the same feeling? Do you want the same results? Do you want the same circumstances? Or do you want better? And the trick here is to catch those thoughts in the moment. Catch when you start overthinking or you start challenging yourself. Catch the moment when you start to talk your way out of doing the thing. Because if you don't catch it, we can't shift it. And if you don't shift it, you're going backwards. So what is a phrase or an action that you can do to break those thoughts that talk you out of doing the thing that you want to stick? Could be a phrase. It could be a physical action like jumping up, clapping your hands, clicking your fingers. Get used to being a little weird. (laughs) Be weird with yourself. Like I say it literally out loud. Laura, same or better. It could be as simple as nope, do the thing. Please let this be easy. Because if you make it something complex, you're not going to do that either. The goal here is to be able to catch your thoughts when you try to talk yourself out of doing it and to have a tool ready to go that you can implement so that you can choose differently. This is a game changer. I promise you. It's literally the root of the difference between going back to the old thing and making the decision and taking the action to do the new thing. I would say that this is probably 80% of the reason that I have been able to make any kind of change in my life because your brain is very, very powerful and sometimes it needs a new direction to be steered into. All right. Number four is getting an accountability partner. Someone that is relying on you, counting on you, or holding you to doing the thing. I was kind of curious, so I looked up some research, and it shows that people are 95, 95% more likely to follow through with a commitment when they have an accountability partner. That is mind-blowing to me. I mean, I know that this works, but I didn't realize how well it works. And then I pull back and I'm like, Laura, no shit, it works. This is why people have gym buddies and walking buddies, mastermind groups, collective groups. Oh, I'm sorry, like the Gutsy Collective, for instance. Shameless plug here. Every single day I watch women make positive changes in their life. And part of the reason is because they're in a community where there are accountability systems in place. 
it helps so much when you're making changes when you don't do it alone. Just because you can do it alone doesn't mean that you have to. And your success rate bumps up by 95% when you've got somebody on the other end of the line holding you accountable to it. I mean, it's just the facts are the facts. So joining a group, may I mention the Gutsy Collective, for instance, where you're not only getting the accountability, but you're also getting learning. I'm teaching you. If you love the Power Back episodes of the Gutsy Podcast, the Gutsy Collective is going to be a tool that you're going to be like, I don't even know how I did this without it. And I encourage you, if you want to test it out and see what the hype is all about and see if it can truly work for you, then come sign up. The first two weeks are free. You get full access to everything, literally everything. That's how much I believe in the power. And you can ask any of the members when you get in there what it's been like for them. And if you love it, phenomenal. We'll fold you right in. And if at any point you decide it's no longer for you, you get to cancel at any time. I'll put the link in the show notes so you can click right on it. Or you can just go to lauraora.com. Across the top of the page, there is a tab called membership. There you can sign up for your free trial, okay? There are other things that you can put in place as well, though. You can get a friend or a spouse involved. You can join a group or a community that's specific to the task, the goal, the change that you're making. You can also use your phone as an accountability system where maybe you're setting limitations on how long you're on certain apps by setting up reminders to help yourself, setting up different apps that help hold you accountable to the things that you're doing. I mean, there's so many tools and resources available. All you have to do is ask. People love to help people succeed. I know it because I see it and live it every single day. And last but not least is reconnecting with why you're doing this. See, a lot of times when you're in this process of change, you've done this 10, 20, 30 times, it becomes monotonous, it becomes boring, you start to lose interest in it, then you start going back to old ways, we've not yet formed a habit, and it's like, ugh. And a lot of times that happens because we have lost sight of why we're doing this in the first place. We're annoyed that we're not further along, we should already have this figured out by now. Why isn't this done? What's wrong with me? See why we need that interrupter tool? Staying connected with why you're doing this is going to give you that extra oomph in the 11th hour when you feel like you're not going to do it. I'm a super visual person and I need to see. I need to see to connect with things sometimes. So I have my vision board posted next to my desk where I sit and do my work and I have it taped to my wall next to my bed. I need to remember what I'm working on and towards, what it means to me. Because when things get hard or monotonous, it's easy to forget why you're doing this. So this could be a vision board. It could be something as simple as a post-it with something written on it on your mirror. Maybe it's a picture that you make on your lock screen on your phone, your desktop wallpaper, a picture you carry around in your wallet or tape to your notebook. Remember why you're doing this in the first place. Financial freedom, health and wellness, The ability to walk the stairs in the new city that you want to go to. Sitting at a book signing with all these people that have just read the novel that you just wrote. Helping clients in the business that you've just built. Remember to look at the bigger picture. Come up out of the trenches and look at it from the overhead. Look, I know that making changes are difficult. It's challenging. It's sometimes lonely and discouraging. And yet, Look how many amazing things you've already done. You've changed habits. You've tried new things. You've launched stuff. You've stuck with stuff before. My friend, all you're doing is ascending to the next level, achieving the next milestone in your life, adding value into your world. These are tools that I promise you, if you start to use them, things will begin to get a little bit easier. Give yourself the opportunity to be proud of yourself to say, I I am sticking with it. It might be messy and it might not be perfect and that's okay, but damn it, I'm doing it. One of the greatest feelings in the entire world is giving yourself the opportunity to say, I stuck with it. I did this for me. I did this. When you follow through for you and nothing and no one else, my friend, that is a superpower that nothing and no one can ever take away from you. 
I hope this was super helpful for you today. In fact, I would love to hear from you. Send me a message. I'm on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. My handle is at that Laura Aura. And tell me which one resonated with you or maybe another one that you use that has been working for you. And a reminder that the Gutsy Collective is open arms ready to support you. So just click on the link in the show notes or go to lauraora.com and sign up for that free trial. The hardest part is getting started, but once you're in, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. You've got this, my friend. I wholeheartedly believe in you. And until I see you next time, stay gutsy.